So we're going to talk about venom allergies. Mm. Um, and to me, when I, when somebody talks to me about a venom, I immediately think about snakes. But we're not mm. talking necessarily about <laughs> snakes, are we? Well, we could be. So snakes do have venom. Um, the important difference really rather than the word venom is is stings versus bites so bites are at the front end with the jaws and that's what snakes obviously do uh, horse flies bite as well uh, with their jaws uh, and people can have anaphylaxis to both of those uh, both of those types of venom stings are with the tail uh, and that's what bees and wasps do uh, but they also have venom in there so scientifically speaking a venom is something that causes a reaction uh, when it's injected and a toxin is something that is ingested and causes reactions from inside. So rather than the insect as such, it's the bite versus sting and venom versus toxin. Really, that's the big difference. And we're talking mostly today about uh, bees and wasps. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, hopefully, I mean, it's, I don't know when people have been watching this, but if they're watching it now in May, it's certainly not May weather. Uh, I don't know what bees and wasps think of the weather and whether they uh, uh, come out of this time of year that they normally might come out. But mm. uh, it's really, a, it, it, would you say it's more of a seasonal issue for people? Yeah, so the, so bees and wasps tend not to be an issue over winter. They can be, um, particularly in the warmer parts of the country. Uh, but broadly speaking, they they emerge in spring and they go through summer to April, uh, to uh, August and autumn, um, September, and then they go, they disappear again. So they, they are a problem, but by and large, it's a, it's a spring, summer, early autumn sort of problem. Uh, 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 if somebody got then stung by a bee or a wasp, I mean, first of all, is, is there a difference? Do people react differently um, to getting stung by a bee or stung by a wasp? Both are pretty mm -hmm. nasty. Yeah, so they're, they're different insects, different parts. They're both part of a group called Hymenoptera. Uh, and within that, there are various groups of wasps and bees, uh, different types of each of them. Uh, bees are, generally speaking, the broadest classification is honeybees, which do cause stings, and they're the main problems. And solitary bees, uh, which tend to live in isolation. The, they, they have stings, but they're very tiny, and they don't cause problems with humans. Uh, and bumblebees, uh, obviously, which are generally fairly benign. They don't sting unless they're provoked uh, quite, quite a bit. Wasps are a bit more diverse. Uh, there are the common wasps, uh, which are uh, Vespula and Dolica Vespula are the two groups of those. And there are the larger ones like hornets, uh, which are a group called Vespa, which again, exist in the UK. Uh, it's usually the common wasps that tend to be more of a problem. Uh, and in Europe and occasionally in the UK, there are other ones as well. And when they sting, they cause reactions in exactly the same way. They have different types of venom, different constituents. So if you're allergic to one, it doesn't mean you're allergic to another. Um, and really bees and wasps are big problems. So they're the ones that we can treat with the licensed products that are available. And how would you know that you have an allergy to the sting? Is there, yeah. Are there any kind of symptoms beforehand or any t signs that might suggest that you are particularly at risk? So broadly speaking, no, um, you won't know unless you're stung and and that would be the, the diagnostic test as it was. We can't obviously do that medically, um, but if you're stung in the field and you don't have a reaction, then you're not allergic to them. The risk factors which would let you know that um, are Things like being a beekeeper will put your risk up. It's still not by no means guaranteed uh, that you react, but things like beekeeping obviously put you at higher risk. Um, underlying medical conditions like mast cell disorders, mast cells are the cells that release the histamine and cause the reactions. If you have too many of them, it stands to reason you're gonna have more severe reactions. Adults tend to be more likely than children. Um, allergy tests is useful to an extent, but they can be positive when you aren't going to have a reaction and negative when you are. So they're not perfect and they don't predict it black and white, whether or not you're going to react. Really, it, it comes down to a balance of probabilities based on all of those factors. Um, the biggest predictor of whether you're going to react is your previous reaction or the reaction to a previous sting. Um, if you have a severe reaction, you're likely to have another severe reaction. If you have a mild reaction, you're more likely to have a mild reaction. 
and there's some crossover between those based on all sorts of factors um, that uh, can affect the severity of anaphylaxis. Um, but there's no perfect test to say whether you're allergic to venom or not, apart from being stung. So how could somebody tell whether they've got a, a serious allergy to a sting um, and, and the difference between that and an unordinary sting? You know, it'll, it'll hurt, it'll swell, it'll go red. Mm. What happens when somebody actually is um, seriously at risk? So it can present in all sorts of different ways, much the same as other allergies can. Uh, anything from pain at the site with maybe a tiny little spot of swelling um, through to what we call large local reactions where the the area of swelling is more than 10 centimetres wide is the sort of arbitrary cutoff for that. Uh, so if you're stung on the forearm and your forearm swells, but otherwise you're fine, we'd call that a large local reaction. There can be mild systemic uh, symptoms like hives or itching or flushing uh, without any airway breathing uh, circulation type problems uh, that would be seen in anaphylaxis and then there's anaphylaxis which has a b or c problems so tightness in the throat a hoarse voice uh, wheeze cough shortness of breath dizziness lightheadedness potentially blackout um, and they are all part of anaphylaxis and obviously it can be more severe than that and potentially fatal in terms of the difference in symptoms, venoms tend to have more of a blood pressure related reaction. So it tends to be a low blood pressure rather than wheeze and hives that you might get with food allergy, for example. So there is a slightly different presentation. They tend to be more low blood pressure with some hives, perhaps some abdominal pain as well um, is common in venom reactions. So it can be anything from mild through to those more severe uh, types of reactions hmm. so there are a couple of uh, um, treatments that are available uh, for people with a with a serious allergy mm -hmm. uh, what are the sort of things that people need to consider so firstly it's important to if you've had a reaction a systemic reaction or have a medical condition or a reason to be at higher risk to feel that you're at higher risk being seen in a specialist allergy service, or at least having advice from an allergy service is important. Uh, because venom immunotherapy, the treatments that you're mentioning, uh, are very effective in reducing the risk of reactions, subsequent reactions. And it provides for wasp allergy, com essentially complete protection in about 90 to 95% of cases, which is very beneficial, that's a, almost completely effective. Uh, B allergy, it's slightly less, it's about 80 to 85%, uh, but that's still a fairly big protective factor. It is complicated uh, in terms of the duration and the nature of the visits. It needs to be done in a specialist allergy center. Um, it's weekly doses for anywhere between seven weeks and 26 weeks, depending on the protocol, uh, they're the licensed uh, protocols available at the moment. Um, some other products in other countries and very occasionally in the UK can have much shorter updosing periods uh, of that. And then it extends out to every six to eight to 10 weeks for three years at least and occasionally longer. So it's quite a labor intensive and time intensive uh, process, but there's a high benefit for it. The benefit really is reduce, is improving quality of life because you may be less anxious about being stung. Um, it may be more comforting to know that in the context of heart disease or lung disease, you have at least reduced that risk um, that might occur um, in the context of, of venom allergy. Um, and obviously the other treatments are the, the treatments of reactions. So uh, adrenaline, EpiPens, uh, or JAXT or MRA, whichever brand you have is important. And there are anaphylaxis action plans all over the place. The Recess Council in the UK uh, published guidance on management. And so anybody who's had a severe reaction should have a adrenaline auto injectors of whichever brand is prescribed. Knowing how to use them and ideally having played with a practice pen, for example, to, to, know, to be comfortable in when and how to use them is very important because early adrenaline for systemic reactions is the management. That's the, the main management. Antihistamines can be helpful for the, 
the itch and the rash, and particularly for local reactions, for example. Um, sometimes there's a bit of a delayed local reaction, um, which if it's slightly itchy, may be a delayed immune response to the venom. Uh, if it's more painful, then it does raise the possibility of infection, which is often what, what is also thought about. Um, antihistamines can be partly helpful for that. Uh, and um, other medications like steroids are often prescribed. There's no, it's not essential. They may be helpful. Um, they're often given by ED, uh, but that's another, another treatment for, for venom reactions. So I don't want to overwhelm um, accident and emergency or the ambulance services. Um, but if somebody then does get a sting, mm. never had one before, mm. at what point do they think, actually, this is getting pretty serious? Um, you've, you've described the kind of swelling and the redness. Mm. But when do they kind of feel, you know, the blood pressure, the fainting, the almost feeling as though they're passing out, I presume, or... Mm. When when do you then dial the nine nine nine? We advise um, not for people not to move, to lie down, to stay still. So going to actually seek out, if at all possible, mm. um, to stay still, not to seek out uh, assistance. Mm. Um, so airway breathing circulation is the is the the sort of fundamental idea of when to call an ambulance. If you're especially anxious, that may also be a reason, particularly if there are underlying factors, but broadly speaking, um, airway, breathing and circulation. So anything inside the teeth with tongue or throat swelling, vocal changes, shortness of breath, tight chestedness, uh, dizziness, lightheadedness. It's sometimes difficult to distinguish anxiety as well, because if you've been stung and you're worried about it, hyperventilating and, and your breath might be a little deeper. You may get some tingling around your lips. It's difficult, um, but it's better to call the ambulance. They'll come and assess you and say everything's fine and off they go. It doesn't necessarily mean that you'll go to hospital, but it means you've got the safety net. If you do need to, then you've got help on the way. So anything inside the teeth really is, is a, okay. a rule of thumb for that. Local reactions don't need an ambulance unless there are those other airway breathing circulation problems. And going back to the, the, the treatment, presumably to access the specialist services at an allergy clinic, it's initially uh, contact with your GP. Would the GP more than likely prescribe an adrenaline pen in the meantime? Mm -hmm. um, and you, you, you kindly gave us a bit of a plug, I should have said earlier on, there's tons of stuff on, our, on the Anaphylaxis UK website about adrenaline, about using auto -inject injectors. Um, we've also got a great um, um, fact sheet and some information on uh, immunotherapy as well as running a bee and wasp venom campaign this summer. Um, so, we, the, you know, come to the uh, Anaphylaxis UK website. But that, that initial contact would be through the GP, um, get the adrenaline pens and then a referral. But not every allergy clinic prescribes venom and immunotherapy mm. so it yeah. would be, have to be to a, one of the specialist centers yeah so the, the the easiest way your gp should know where the nearest allergy service is and there'd at least be a direction from that the bsaci website has a, a find a clinic page uh, where you can filter by offering venom and immunotherapy for adults or children whichever is applicable um, the emergency department should provide two adrenaline pens um, as you're discharged if you do need to go to, to the emergency department. Uh, but GPs likewise, and they would be able to refer you to an allergy service. Any anaphylaxis of any cause is one of the nice criteria for referral to an allergy service. So regardless of the cause, it's important to be seen in an allergy clinic part for, partly for the treatment but also defining the cause and evaluating the risk and information and auto injector training and support and direction to uh, to uh, support organizations as well uh, which is I mean, knowledge is is um, knowledge is key and knowing about it and what the risks are how it might present and how to manage it Totally agree. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Anaphylaxis UK, we want everyone to enjoy the summer, mm. picnics, the beach, you know, doing things 
that they uh, and we all enjoy doing um hopefully when the sun comes out and we get a bit of summer uh, andrew that's been super informative uh, um really interesting and i don't think an area that people necessarily know so much about we often talk about um food allergies peanut allergies milk allergies egg um or even maybe latex occasionally but um sting bee sting wasp stings very serious yeah 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 absolutely it's about about half of cases of anaphylaxis in adults are due to venom and it's around about 20 percent of children so it's not a small problem by any means uh, but it is often overlooked uh, because of food allergy being a very visible rightly so uh, cause of anaphylaxis uh, but we shouldn't forget the other other causes of anaphylaxis